Hi, uh, this is the final part to the World Backup Day a series of videos that we've done. Um, so today I wanted to talk about um, a simple backup, which is just backing up your NAS to a USB hard drive. Um, but perhaps you wanted something a bit more than just a, a plain old USB hard drive. So the one I'm using uh, here today um, is the iStorage Disk Assure series. Uh, so I've got uh, two different types here. So I'll just cover off a little bit about the two that I'm using. Um, so that you can see the uh, the different uh, options that we've got available here. Um, so the first one is the Disk Assure Pro 2. This is a small form factor size, uh, so it's got a two and a half inch drive inside, either SSD um, or HDD. Um, I won't go through all the security standards that are on screen there for you, but to uh, to look at the unit, it's very nice, very well built. Um, the cable's built right into the side as well. It unfolds and stores inside, and it comes with a carry case. Um, so. Um, I'll, I'll connect one of these to the other NAS a bit later on and we'll put a bit of a cut-in video that I'll do of me uh, typing in the code. You get some nice flashy lights showing you how that works. Um, so this is the Disk Assure Pro 2 and the other drive that we're, we're going to show today is the Disk Assure uh, DT2. So this is a desktop based drive um, so it comes with a, a, a power plug so that you need to plug the power in USB cable to whatever you want to read it on. Um, again, it's got all the security standards there. This is hard drive only, all the way up to 20 terabytes in size. Uh, the keypad on the two is very similar. Um, they both have the same default code. So when you see me typing it in later, I'll just be doing 11223344 and hitting the unlock button. Um, and then the NAS will see it so that it gets connected. Um, so those are the two drives we're talking about today. So the first one I do already have connected is this one, the Disk Assure DT2. So I've got that connected. Um, to our TS-364. Um, so that one's connected. I've got the four terabyte uh, HDD model. Um, all of these devices uh, that I've received here, they do have XFAT as standard on the file system. And we did an update recently where um, you don't have to have a license code or anything for XFAT. It's now just built in from QTS-5 and QUTS Hero 5 onwards. Um, so you can use them uh, very natively with the QNAP without having to go get the um, a couple of dollar license that we used to have to uh, use to, to use the XFAT file system. Um, so it shows up in the external storage. You'll get a pop-up a bit like you do on Windows, let's say, where a drive appears and what would you like to do with it. You'll get that same thing on a QNAP and it, it can be used in a few different places. Uh, so here we can see it in the external storage section of storage and snapshots. And this is where you can do some different actions on it. So you can do things like formatting, uh, getting some information about the drive, what's the utilization of the drive. So here's just sort of information and basic formatting um, of that drive. Um, so this very simple. This is how it looks by default. I've got it empty right now. So the four terabytes is seen as 3.64. Um, another place it will be seen, um, if you do plug it into the front USB port uh, of any QNAP, um, it can also be assigned to the USB one-touch copy feature within our Hybrid Backup Sync 3 application. Um, so here it's seen here, I've got it set to just be an external storage, di uh, storage drive, uh, but you can have it set to automatically import new media. That feature is more useful, say, if you've got a uh, um, digital camera that you've got connected, uh, you want it emptied so that you can go off and take more pictures, all the, all the data backed up. Um, or you can assign a one-touch copy uh, task to it. So the one-touch copy is you can choose to send data from the drive into the NAS, from in the NAS to the drive, which folder in the NAS to the drive, um, and will it auto-eject after the, the backup job has finished as well. So you can create it from there. Um, today I'm going to create just a regular backup job though, so I'm not going to use one of these options here. Um, so with this one, the Disk Assure DT2, this is the larger desktop size one. Uh, so I'm going to go to the backup and restore options here in uh, HBS3. Let me make that bigger. Um, so with the backup and restore, I'm going to choose to do a new backup job. I'm going to pick what the source folders are going to be. So I've got this uh, iStorage folder here. So just as a reference of what I've got in there. Uh, like the previous videos, um, just something fairly inoffensive. I've just got a, quite a few ISO files here. So it's I think about 28, 30 gigs worth um, of ISO files. And these are what I'm going to use uh, for this backup job. So I'm going to say I'm going to back up the, uh, the iStorage folder. Click Next. I'm going to back up to the local NAS because the drive is attached to the local NAS. Select that. And then I'm going to pick the uh, the Assure device that I've got there. Again, if I wanted to, I could create a, uh, a folder in there if I wanted to. So I could create a folder called uh, Backup, for example. Click uh, the plus symbol, and it's going to add a, a backup folder uh, that I can send the data to. So I'm going to click OK on that one. 
so one folder and it's going across uh, to a single folder um, on the uh, external backup drive. So saying that I've got 28 gigs of data, I can click next. I can set up a schedule here if I want to. I can have it just back up now with no schedule. Um, we've got different options for things like version management, how many versions of the file. We've got smart versioning, uh, which gives you a good example here of um, how you can set it up so that it's uh, dynamically adjusting how many versions you have over time. And you can also enable a data integrity check to make sure that the data that got there um, is exactly what was supposed to. Um, just click next. Now you've got lots of different rules here. So you've got um, different filters. You can choose certain files not to be um, included. Uh, you can use QDDupe, which we featured in a previous video. Um, so I'm going to continue not using QDDupe for this. I already showed that in a previous video. Uh, different policies, you can do encryption, uh, kind of redundant on this drive because it's got its own encryption built right in, so there's no need to do any extra encryption. Of course, if you want to, you can enable extra encryption as well. Uh, and different options, so when you get notifications on the NAS, if something happens or if you want it to restart the uh, the backup job, um, if the, the job did not complete correctly. So we can click next, everything's happy. I'm going to click uh, create on that one. And now it's going to run that backup job. So that's the TS364 uh, going across to the uh, Disk Assure uh, DT2 from iStorage there. Um, so in this, this example, it's just 28 gigs of data. It's all USB 3, uh, 5 gig a second on this one. So it's going to go across nice and fast. So it's going to get the data there. Now we'll check back in on that one a bit later on. And I'll show you how it looks when you connect one. Um, so here is the uh, TS251D. Right now at the top, it says I've got no external devices connected. Um, if I go look in storage and snapshots at the external storage section, it says nothing is connected. Uh, so I've got the uh, the smaller one uh, next to me here, which is the uh, Disk Assure Pro 2 from iStorage. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, connect this to the front USB port of this TS251D. Uh, uh, so hopefully here we can cut in a video of what it looks like when it's uh, connected. So I've got a padlock with a red light, it's locked. Uh, the NAS still hasn't seen anything, so I'm going to uh, type in the code and push the unlock button, uh, getting lots of flashing lights while it's just verifying the code. And then as soon as I get the uh, the solid green light over here, um, sorry, the flashing green light on the uh, uh, iStorage device, it will appear on the NAS. So there it is, it's appeared. I've got device one, um, it's connected. I can expand it out as well. Uh, there's the pop-up I was talking about, letting you know you can assign it a task every time it's connected, um, or you can tell it to not ask you again. I'll just close that, I'll go do it manually. Uh, so here we can see I've got uh, a terabyte uh, worth of storage here on this one. Um, again, pre-formatted uh, with uh, XFAT. Um, so on this one, it's connected. At the top, we've got connected external devices. You get a quick eject button here as well if you want to uh, unplug that device so that you can uh, take it off nice and safely. Uh, so that appears at the top. Um, but that's the, uh, the, the extra one that's connected there. Uh, this one doesn't need any power supplies, of course. It's a small one. It's completely bus powered uh, from the, uh, the NAS USB yeah, USB connection, so that's nice and easy. Um, and again, we can go to uh, HBS3. Uh, we can go in and uh, we'll see it in a couple of uh, locations. So if I click onto the services option, uh, we'll see it down in the USB one touch copy section. So I'll take you through that on this one. So we'll say we wanted to do a USB one touch copy. We'll click settings. And then it's uh, the different options for the different backups. So you can uh, back up to NAS or you can back up to the connected USB drive. So right now you see the arrow is going from the USB to the NAS. So if we change that to the backup to connected drive, we've switched the arrow around. Um, backup action, you've got a few different options. I'm gonna do add directory. Each backup will create effectively a new directory. And you can do synchronize if you want it to just change, uh, keep just the items that have changed. Um, we'll add a paired folder. So the paired folder, again, I'll just use that iStorage folder that we had from earlier. It's the same on both of these NAS that I'm showing. Um, we'll go to the uh, front USB port and I'm just going to click OK on that one on the front USB. So I'm not going to put it in any folders here. You can add multiple uh, backup options here if you wanted to back up multiple things with the button push. Uh, you can make it have a, a noise. I'll turn that off so that we don't get that uh, on the video here. Um, and you can choose to manually un unmount the USB drive or you can have it um, automatically do it if you want to as well. So I'm just going to apply that and apply that down there. Um, so now I've configured uh, the front button on the NAS to do a backup job. Uh, so I can push that button on the front of the NAS and it's going to initiate a backup uh, to go from um, that same folder across. So this is more useful if you're 
uh, using the USB drives, perhaps uh, keeping them in a fire safe overnight or taking them off site. Uh, when somebody comes in in the morning and connects it, uh, you don't have to go into the NAS interface to start the backup or anything like that. You just connect it, push the button that's right next to the USB port. On some NAS, it completely surrounds the USB port. Push that button and it will do the pre-configured action, uh, backing up certain data to a certain location. Um, so it's a really cool, easy way to do it. Uh, so again, that's with the uh, the iStorage, the Disk Assure uh, Pro 2 um, and the Disk Assure uh, DT2. Uh, so just a quick reminder for anybody that wants to pause the information there on screen, if you want to read all the uh, different uh, security standards, encryption standards and, and features of the device, uh, move on to the next page for the larger one. Again, pause it if you want to read up any more on those. Okay. Okay, so that's the uh, the end of the uh, the World Backup Day series of videos. Hopefully, uh, uh, you found those useful, and uh, you're all able to to back up your NAS in uh, uh, different ways, um, whatever suits yourself best. Um, but that's uh, uh, that's backing up to a directly attached uh, USB drive. Um, again, it doesn't have to be an encrypted drive, uh, but uh, why not be belts and braces? And uh, with these iStorage ones, you don't need any specific software. Uh, if you move this drive to your computer, your Windows, your Mac, it doesn't matter where you put it. You don't need any software to do the decryption. It's all done on the device uh, with the uh, with the pin codes that are on the front of the device. And you've got admin codes as well as uh, separate user codes as well. Um, if anybody does have any questions, uh, please, uh, please do ask them in the comment section down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.